So how do you find products? How do you take the stuff we talked about just now, this criteria, and put it into practice? How do you do it? Well, the first thing you want to do is get yourself a Google Doc. And if you want, you can do this with me now um, and actually uh, practice while I'm doing it. It's a good time to, to start researching some products. Or you can watch me. It's up to you. Now, on this um, doc, I recommend you just do two things first. Two columns. Number one, the link for the product that you're looking at. Okay. Actually, three columns would be better. Column for the link for the product. Okay. A column for how many sellers making at least 3K a month. And a column for how many established sellers with more than 500 reviews. Right. This is how I start my product research process. What we're going to do is we're going to go on Amazon. We're going to look for products that have 3K, uh, three sellers making 3K per month or more, and five or less sellers with more than 500 reviews. Okay, we're going to try and add as many products as we possibly can to this list, right? And then we're going to do a deeper dive on them. Okay, so. Um, we're not going to stick too strict to the criteria. If I find a product that has two sellers making 3K a month, I'm going to add it still. If we find a product that has six established sellers, I'm still going to add it because remember, we're practicing. It doesn't have to be perfect. These products are meant to be crap. Right? They're not meant to be incredible. They're not going to be meant to be products that are going to help us build a business that's going to make us millions. We can do that in the future, right? We, we can, we'll get to that. Right now, all we have to do um, is practice, get some momentum, and actually add something to a database, right? Because it feels good once you get started. Okay. So in order to do this, I have a three-step process that I want to show you. You guys may have seen this before. The three C's, okay, when we're looking for products. First one is choose. Second one is check. I can write properly. Third one is compare. Choose, check, compare. This is how we find um, products. In fact, I don't know, can you guys see my iPad? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, choose, check, compare. This is how we find products. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you each phase. And through this, you'll see an easy way to find products and add them to your list. So let me share my screen again. So the choose phase is very simple. What we're doing is we're looking for um we were searching on Amazon to look for a list of products to choose from to pick one that looks like it might be a good product to private label in other words a product we can import from China put our own logo on uh, import in bulk and sell so again we want something probably quite small quite light uh easy to sell no electronics nothing too bulky nothing too complicated all right so the first thing I like to do is just type in minus key and then a load of random characters. And then you're going to get everything on Amazon. All right, minus key, load of random characters, because this basically this search says, Amazon, show me everything that doesn't have this in it, which is obviously everything because nothing has this in it, right? Or like very unlikely. Then once you've done that, choose a category. So I'd go for a low hassle category. Personally, I like home. Uh, sorry, home and kitchen, always good. Lots of low hassle products in home and kitchen. Okay, now you can see pretty much all the products in home and kitchen, sorted kind of randomly. Now the products that come up on page one, anytime you do pretty much any search, they're always going to be selling really well. So if I just use AMZ Scout here to illustrate that, we can check out the revenues for these products. Right, these are all going to be products that are selling very, very well. That's why they're on um page one for example here's a squid game mask obviously that's going to be selling well it's halloween squid games come out it's like the talk of the town it's probably crushing it i'd imagine very surprised if it wasn't um but yeah we've got lots of uh products here that are just crashing there's a flash speed mop starter kit that's making 200 grand a month all right this is what you see on on page one of really any search result. 
So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for products that are quite simple, right? Quite simple. I tend to ignore the adverts, by the way. I tend to ignore them and just focus on the actual listings, not ones we've sponsored on. And we want to find something that looks quite easy to sell. So this is a blanket. Blankets are quite easy. They're not going to break in shipping. They might be a bit bulky, but probably easy. You could put a ton of them in a box and they're not going to break. So I'm going to choose this one, right? That's our first phase. Choose. I've chosen this product that looks kind of easy to sell, right? Next thing we want to do is check it, right? I want to check the product. So what I do is open it up in a new tab and just take a slightly closer look at the product. I want to see what revenue is it doing? Like, is it doing really, really well? If you have a, um, a software, you can hit the button, right? This one's doing £294 a month, which is all right. It's not actually very good, to be honest. But it's probably on the rise if it was on page one. Um, so it's doing quite well. And we also want to see, like, is this like a massive brand? So you can actually Google the brand if you want and just have a look and see, is it a big brand? If it's a big brand, something will come up here and you'll see um, history of the brand. You'll see the product being sold on loads of different websites. Like if I type in Nike on Google, something comes up here with the Nike information, the stock price obviously that indicates it's a huge company because it's public. And you can see the products being sold on all different kinds of shops. Nike, big brand, whatever this one is, not a big brand, no one's ever heard of it. So we could probably compete against it, right? Cool. Alrighty, so we've chosen this, we've checked it, it's not big brand. It's doing all right in terms of sales. Finally, we want to compare it. So what does that mean? Well, we want to have a look at the general niche. Look at all of the, the Sherpa fleece blankets on the marketplace. And we want to see what the competition's like. We want to see the overall levels of demand and the overall levels of competition. So I've typed in Sherpa fleece blanket, which is probably what customers would type in to find the product, right? If you were a customer looking for the product, you wouldn't type in Blumenthal Sherpa fleece blanket, super fluffy and thick throw blanket for, you know, you just type in Sherpa fleece blanket, right? That's probably the keyword that gets the most hits. Then again, Hit your extension button, Jungle Scout, AMZ Scout, Helium 10, whatever it is. Super handy to have one of these um, to use. Then we're going to see if it meets our criteria that I've put here. 3K sellers and established sellers. We're going to put down the numbers of these if the product is anywhere near. All right, so this, this niche... If we sort by revenue, right, all the extensions are basically the same. Jungle Scout will look the same. See if there's more than three sellers making 3K a month. Right, this is what we're looking for to check out our high demand. In this niche, there's clearly more than three. There's probably about 25. Right, So that is definitely good. There's definitely high demand. People want to buy these things. What about competition though? Are there more than five sellers with more than 500 reviews? The answer is yes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is a, an example of a red ocean marketplace or a very high competition niche. Because if you wanna get your product onto page one, to the top of page one and get it selling, You've got to beat 20 sellers who've got more than 500 reviews who are established. You've got to beat them. And it's not going to be easy to do that. It's going to be hard. Because the customers are going to buy from the guy with 70,000 reviews. From the guy with 6,000 reviews. From the guy with 3,300 reviews. Right? They're not going to buy from you if you've got no reviews, no brand. No one's ever seen you before. And you're like way down here on like page five. So much harder to compete. So therefore this product, Veto, right? We're not going to go for it. That's fine, right? So this is the choose, check, compare framework. Does this kind of make sense to you guys? Like how to actually find the products?